What's up? It's Andy from Crown the Empire, and you're watching Richard Metal Fan. So what's up, guys? I'm here backstage at the Masquerade in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm here interviewing Andy Leo from Crown the Empire. How are you doing, Andy? Good, man. How are you? Doing fantastic. So you're currently on this tour right now with The Word Alive, Until I Wake, and Drugs. How's the tour been going so far? Most typical interview question. Ever. Yeah, <laughs> solid opener. Uh, it, it's been great. As we on the last five days. Um, we got a day off yesterday, and it's just gotten to the point where like nobody said a word to each other the whole off day. Everybody's just so tired, so exhausted. But I'm recharged. I feel great. I'm ready to, to bring the heat tonight. It'll be good. Oh yeah, it's hot man, baby. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what I want to do is do a quick rundown of your catalog as well as like your musical journey from where you started to now. But before we go into that, I want to dive back into the very beginnings. Who are like the first bands that got you into metal and made you want to be a vocalist? Um, I would say. I think I've always I've always liked just music in general, just all of it. But my first taste of metal, I had. Um, we grow up in Texas. I think a lot of people had just went, like the traditional like OG classic rock metal. Like they all kind of went through the same like Texas type of vibe. Um, but I came up. I had actually had a babysitter growing up who um, would like sneak her boyfriend over, and he had some. Uh, was like, yo, little dude, check this out. And it was like, senses fail, and then like, taking back Sunday and stuff like that. I think, yeah, it was just like a more alt, like, scene intro to, to metal, really. I, you know, and there's also um, System of a Down's Toxicity, too. I yeah. think that one was like the OG, like, everybody just had that album. Yeah, Chop Suey, that was like the band that got me into metal. Yeah, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, that was the first one um, that unanimously, across all, you know, family members and shit, had that record. It still slaps to this day. Um, it was my first real one. I was in. I, I did a thing in middle school. Where we did like a battle of the bands. We played one show and that was it. We never we never played or practiced ever again. But yeah, Crown um, picked us picked me up when I was I was 16. I've heard um, I was 15 actually. And then uh, Tree and Huber, our guitar player and bass player, were 17 at the time, and they were looking for a vocalist and gave it a shot and just got super super fucking lucky. <laughs> yeah, and also, man, one thing to talk about is like your first release, the Limitless EP. How did that? Yeah, we recorded with Jeff Rockwell. I can't remember the name of the studio at the time, but there were a lot of people from Dallas recording there. It sounded awesome. There was like Forever the Sake as Kids at the time. Uh, o Sleeper was around at the time. You would see them parked up and we're like, oh shit, this is like, this is, this is fucking awesome. Um, we were still in school, so I think like every couple weeks um, we would pull together some money to try and record one song at a time. And just over, over the course of the school year, um, fin finished out that EP and then as far as like putting it out, we were like the first, this was like our first taste of like internet marketing ever. It was like, we, we had this, this YouTube campaign and it was like, yo, if you could call it that, we were just like, hey, we, we made a videos where we all kind of explained what made us limitless. You know, something we'd overcome and things we were willing to do for the band. I think everybody just wanted to, we just wanted to show like how, how, how diehard we were about it. And um, people made YouTube videos and it actually like, really jump started by the time the ep came out like there were already we had a bunch of people on board before we even really started playing shows i think we'd only played like one or two um when when that had happened which is which is nuts but you know myspace era youtube era like that was the you know the weird internet like changing the actual reality you know <laughs> yeah yeah and then of course you later eventually got signed to rise records how'd they find you guys um off of that ep actually when we put it out this was back when like you had to buy songs like it would say like 99 cent like to each next to each song you would want to get on the on itunes we had uh we had ended up in like the top 10 oh sorry, that's all good uh, top 10 on the rock charts at that point which was you know no label no management um so at that point we got i think seven record contracts the same day i think we got some from like you know fearless hopeless i think fueled by ramen at the time it hit us up and after you know having lawyers look over everything rise realized was was just the, the most down to earth like team for us and we've been with them ever since awesome and then of course going into 2012 you released the fall fallout and being as this album is now 10 years old and of course you're playing it in full tonight do you have like a different perspective about it now as to opposed to when you first put it out um definitely i think i appreciate it a lot more now than i did back then i think we didn't know a lot about metalcore we didn't know a lot about songwriting we didn't know what we were doing and 
for whatever reason, like the fact that we didn't have all the answers and the fact that some of the songs were weird and like jarring and we didn't know about transitions, you know, like I think kind of the mistakes are, is, 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 was the charm about it. And I think it's what kind of got us initially popular. And I think people kind of lose, kind of lose track of, you know, other bands too, you know, lose track of what, you know, you think you're, you're ever, you're ever growing and you're constantly learning more musician and you're, you're adapting and evolving, but it doesn't mean you have to discredit you know everything that's got you there the first place and appreciate the you know something that make make you cringe or something that you you felt like you were over you still have to you know give give credit where credit is due and be appreciative like damn where we were at that time and what we did together it's a magical moment and it's in you know immortalized forever and i think it's it would it, we wanted to do it justice by giving everybody who wasn't around for that yeah um, i know, noticed like according to sell us that you're doing an interesting thing where you're just like kind of like shuffling playing it so it's kind of like taking like a different approach to playing it live yeah, absolutely. Like just doing it from front to back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we wanted to mix it up and kind of have like a flow to it, and like, you know, I know there were some people that were were into like these songs and nobody else was into, so it was like, all right, it's gonna be fun to like throw that in the end of the set, like toss this in here and, and just keep them guessing a little bit. So. Yeah, and then of course going to 2014 with the next album, Resistance, Rise of, of the Runaway. So of course with the, the the first album, you have like your entire your career and your life to write the first album. Did you felt like pressure to follow up the fallout going into resistance um you know what we actually had one month to write and record the album for the fallout yeah and we didn't really have that many we had a couple of riffs here and there but like after after being cooked under pressure like that but coming out with something that was ultimately cool i think i had i felt more safe the second time out with resistance we had a, little, a lot more time we were up in um upstate new york um with dan corner for that for like a few months in the winter and we i don't know i feel like we had a lot more time to and we were, I think, a little bit more ambitious, and we did a lot of cool stuff. You know, it was like a, um, you know, concept record, and we had a lot of war sounds, and we actually went to like gun ranges and recorded song. Like, we had a lot of time to do a lot of cool stuff um, with it. Yeah, and, and since you mentioned it was a concept album, did you like like do a lot of like research search when it when it comes to making these kind of concepts? Um, not really. I think it was just with the first record, and I think we just I spent more time like playing video games and and you know watching movies than I did doing anything else and I think having like being able to create and kind of escape into our own world and like kind of build our own bubble out to the side you know was a safe way to write about shit that we didn't really know or had experienced yet you know we were just like you know what if you know meant this meant this guys and these guys are here you know I think it was just you know a, a, a place for us to create freely without it you know taking ourselves too serious and you know being able to tackle some some cool stuff I think so, absolutely. I think we had, I think at that point, metalcore had had been super saturated, and people were starting to make fun of it. You know, a lot of a lot of bands were falling off, and I think a lot of people were trying to do the same thing. And I kind of, you know, kind of lost its magic. And I think around that time, people were either pivoting to like active rock, or you know, trying to like, or like, I, I don't know. Everybody tried to do different things at that point, but I think. We had learned a lot and called in all these favors and been in LA for a little bit and had the opportunity to write with a bunch of people. So I think, you know, our producer at the time was like, you know, let's, let's try and set you guys apart even further. You know, you guys were already kind of a weird, you know, stuck out like a sore thumb in that thing. I think he doubled down on it. And I think, you know, it was a cool idea and I think we pulled off a lot of things and really learned about ourselves. And I think there are things we could have done better with that record too. Um, but ultimately, super, still super proud of it. Super, super stoked. Um, oh man, I think we had really honed in, um, a sound. I think we'd really honed in a sound that we weren't a hundred percent on. I think we'd always kind of had like an identity crisis with our band. We kind of jumped from one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. And, and I think it was cool cause it allowed us to play with a lot of things. But I think with Sun Sky, we kind of figured out what things to take from everything and what made us, you know, special initially and how to combine it with all the cooler shit that we could be we could be doing now, music wise, riff wise, um, everything. Yeah, and, do you, and do you, would you consider this kind of like being a step up, like vocally for you? Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, times have, times have changed, and you know, people come and go, and I think we we had to we had to either you know step up and evolve, or you know, 
ultimately suffer for it. And I think everybody pulled their weight and did a lot more, you know, behind the scenes and, you know, in, in, in front as, as, we, as we could. And I think it's ultimately paid off. Um, I think we've, we've always had the opportunity and a lot of, uh, when we go into songwriting, a lot of the times, one of the biggest things we picked up was that if it, if it sounds good on acoustic guitar writing, then, then it'll sound good in any setting. You know, I think, um, tearing things down is just a bare bones thing and just letting people kind of experience it as, as it is. And it's, I'm not depending on the production or, you know, and anything else. I think it was just a fun thing and a little, um, you know, a little love letter to our fans, you know, f you know, f for sticking around and kind of throwing a bunch of stuff in there while we were working on the new record. All right. And I know you recently have two new songs out, In Another Life and Dancing with the Dead. Is that like a clear representation of what we're going to expect for a follow-up to Sudden Sky, or is there just kind of like one-off kind of things? Um, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a, a solid follow-up. I think there's, you know, it's, it's all, it feels all cohesive. There's still a couple of outliers, weird ones out there, but I think, you know, we're not, we're not pulling like a bait and switch where it's like, just kidding, it's like a bubble gum. It's a K-pop record, you know, and those are the first two singles, you know. You know, we're not, we're not doing that. No, I think the whole record, I think we've, we've even, sh you know, we were sharpening our, you know, our, our tools in, in that way. Mm, I think it's. I think it depends. Um, it's. It's. It can. It can be either thing. I could. You know, if somebody comes up with a cool riff, and you know, we're talking about you know a vibe, but what kind of pattern, what kind of like energy we bring into it, then you can start. I've had just a riff, and then to start forming phrasing and everything around it. Or you've had like a dope line that you come up with, and then you can try and build out, build out from there, and see how you could you know frame this in the best way. I don't think there's one right way to do it, which is like insane i'm sure but i think um yeah it, it just whatever works works all right and do you tend to leave lyrics open to interpretation do you try to maybe engage the listener in what the songs are about mm, i think i think initially we kept like with the concept record we it was more it felt more narrative and just like a little bit more vague and and, and tackling these these bigger things but i think now it's a i think it's a lot more straightforward i think I've, it feels a little bit more Honest, if that makes sense, a little. Maybe it is. Maybe it is more straightforward. But I think, you know, in in a lot of ways, it feels more real to me just by saying straight up. Yeah, and then I've noticed in another life you work with Courtney from Spirit Box. Box is like collaborating with like other artists, like like open like new ideas for you vocally. Um, I was so stoked that we got that. We didn't know that that was even going to happen until super late in the game. But um, yeah, we we knew we wanted um a feature, you know, at least somewhere, and um, we're just super stoked that she said, yeah. We, we The song was already written, I already, already finished the parts and everything, and I sent it to her, and I was like, yo, if there's anything you want to do, anything you want to change, you know, feel free to do whatever. Um, but here's a song, here's 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 your part. Um, it would be so sick to have you on it and crush it, and she did. All right, All right. and still continuing with, like, the vocal work. Being at, like, now you and, of course, now recently, hey, hey, hey did sing together. Does, does you have to, like, be in the same, like, mind frame? frame, frame? Um, I don't really, I haven't really thought about it like that. I just, we, I, normally when we're just writing, I'm, I, I don't have any particular thing in mind. I just have the song itself getting done and whoever does what, I think live it's, it's different because we have a lot of overlapping parts and there were a lot of things where there are, there are two screamers in the older songs. Um, and we just figure out how to, how to make it work. If he needs a breath, cause here's the thing is he's playing bass too. And there's, there's, there's like, sometimes he's doing th like three different, there's three different things going on in his head at once. And so if he needs some help on, on a part, then I'll do it. But, um, it's been really great. And he's, he's picked up, he's, he's picked up everything, you know, to, to be able to essentially play a completely separate instrument on stage and, and crush it. Rise of the challenge has been amazing and it's super helpful. And awesome. yeah. Anyway, I've got two more questions for you. Yeah. You are kind of like going into the live show. Is there like a similar energy playing live as opposed to recording or there are almost kind of like two separate energy? Um, I think it feels, it feels like two separate entities. You know, there's there are songs that we've had so much fun in the studio making. We have all the time in the world to be creative and to improvise and to see what works and what doesn't. Um, and live, I feel like it just the energy will tell you what the crowd feels. You know, like there are songs that we're like, this is gonna bang live, and then we play it, and then you know it doesn't get the reaction you want at all. And you're like, oh okay. Um, 
it feels like two different things, but I, I appreciate both. And having one and the other kind of helps me understand like, you know, what people love about the show, what, what, I, what I can bring to the table, and how to kind of frame the songs and hype them up the best, the best way. I think Dallas had an amazing scene. I, I haven't been, I have, we moved out to LA a while ago, so I haven't been back in a long time, but um, at least when we came up, it didn't matter what genre. The people were doing like indie pop stuff, and it seemed like any kind of music you wanted to do, there was gonna be a scene of people that, that were happy to, to do it, and, and a welcome place to make it happen. Um, super fortunate, and that's why it was inspiring to, to, to realize that, damn, these guys are right around the corner and doing things that I wish I could do. I think it was, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence that you know, there's a lot of people that have come out of, a lot of great musicians that have come out of Texas because of um, just the music culture in general there. They really, really appreciate it. Awesome. So before we go, I just want to thank you for this interview. Thank is you. just anything else with Kanye Empire here you'd like to plug, plug in terms of like, like new music and can we expect a new album and maybe some new tours? Um, new album will be coming early next year, fingers crossed. You know, the, the shit, shit always goes haywire behind the, behind the scenes sometimes, but... Um, keep on the lookout. We have we announced a tour with Slipknot, and uh, it's going to be delicious. Hopefully, if you haven't checked us out, check us out. And um, yeah, that's it.